last year I did a video on loop to planner and that took off so today we're going to take a look if things have changed and I have a new storyline specifically aimed to planner premium and the loop components so let's go inside and find out what we can do all right so let's start with a brief revisit of the loop to planner talk I had previously. In Loop, we can create workspaces and one of these workspace templates is a project brief. So in here, I have the Loop to Planner version two, which is made using the project brief template. And down below, we have project deliverables. And these project deliverables are a table and a specific type of table, a tasks table. And these task tables have this little nifty little drop down box here called task apps. If I open that, I can open up the task app called planner. So it opens up in a new page. And once it's loaded, I can see these tasks and I can add a bucket, a uh, new bucket. And I can start moving items across. And I can even assign them to myself or just about anyone uh, that I can find. All right, so assign and add. This person can be added to the team. And now I have my plans. This is an untitled plan. So let's get the plan details and let's give it a good name. Loop to planner two and now this loop to planner two is available but our last video ended very abruptly because this loop to planner looks different it has a different icon if i hover over it you'll see that it is a microsoft loop sourced plan so that means that it has a different construct and we can have a limited functionality for it. One of the things that's missing is the ability to go for premium views, right? We don't have the option to add a timeline, people or assignments or anything else from our premium set. Now I thought of something, maybe I can add this loop to planner to a office group and then port it over to a premium solution. So let's try that where in my teams, I have planner as well. And I have in my chat, I have this planner test. Now this is an Office 365 group. So you would say that this could hold a plan, right? So let's go to planner. Let's get the loop to planner two. All right. So here we go. So we're going to try and find the loop to planner plan, add an existing plan, and I'll search for loop to planner, but it doesn't find it. So even though we know that there's a plan somewhere, it's in a somewhat of a, it's in a hybrid state, I would say. Oh, add an existing plan from this team. All right, select an existing plan from this team to add to the channel. All right, but how do we get this? How do we get a plan inside a team? Hmm. So we have our project brief so my plans loop to planner and i can open that up and i can share it with this plan has been shared with one or more files people with access to these files can have a look at members so this doesn't allow me to add it to a team it only allows me to share it with people. And that means it's outside an office group. And that means it cannot be added as something for a premium plan. 
So I haven't gotten past that barrier from a normal plan to a premium plan. But there is a upside. And I found this while investigating the agent type of plans. So if I go to planner, I have three options. And remember, this is planner in teams. So not just planner, which I'm looking at right now. Where's my pre where's my Would you look at that? I'm in Microsoft Teams and now all of a sudden I don't have my cope uh, my project agent option, but I do have this project agent here. Well, that's a little Easter egg for you. <laughs> I cannot create a project agent anymore. That's interesting. I can create a portfolio, I can create this, and I can still use my old agent plans. All right, for the new loop to planner connection, you actually need to do something different with the project manager agent schedules. Now, from my last video, you might remember that we have loop inside our schedule, right? We have a specific type of project that you can only create in teams and for some magical reason i don't have that option right now luckily i did have a old agent plan ready to go for this connection between loop and planner to work successfully let's take a look at this empty agent plan and first thing i want you to do is i want you to keep this goal empty because from previous video, we've seen that it doesn't build an actual schedule. However, what I want you to do is I want you to go to grid and I want you to use the old copilot. Well, the old copilot, the copilot that was already there. And if I create a schedule, the copilot can use this prompt and populate a nice schedule, All right? Created something, something here, and now I pushed it. Sure, I created a schedule that aligns with the PMI standards for building a house in the Netherlands. Great, so now I have a schedule, one that looks better than I get with the project manager agent. Now the thing with a premium plan or with a larger schedule is you don't want to have one single loop, I thought at least, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what you do want to have is the ability to go into whiteboard, start typing something in with your colleagues and, and brainstorming. And we have this loop here. So if open up the workspace, we'll actually open up that loop workspace that we've created and it has all my old loops in here. So if you delete a task in planner, in the, in the project manager's agent, you will not delete the loop component itself. So let me, let me just briefly remove all of these because we don't need them. So now we have a nice schedule that we can work with and we can start working on each of these tasks. And we have a whiteboard to start brainstorming and we can even add tasks from that whiteboard as I've shown in the previous video. And I have a loop value here. And this is where the agent plan actually shines because it gives you two very powerful new applications that you can start using. Whiteboard for brainstorming and loop for collaborating on specific tasks. And the agent actually does something nice here as well. So let's say you already have the schedule built with or without Copilot. That doesn't really matter. But if you have an actual schedule planned, what can you do? You can start working with that schedule. And if there's identifying stakeholders, 
what we can do is I can add a note. In the note, I can start brainstorming a little bit more. And the reason for me to add notes here is because the project manager actually looks at these notes. So let me just fill this in real quick and we can see what the agent can do for us. So if I have some raw information about the identif uh, identified stakeholders, I can now assign this task, the identify stakeholders, and I can assign that to the project manager agent. So identify stakeholders. I don't want to complete it. I want to add the project manager to it. And it is in progress because uh, reach the project manager's agent right now and that again is probably because I need to re-authenticate and I think it worked now so this project manager's agent has some difficulty getting hold of that loop component. So that means that you need to go into loop and re-authenticate and you'll see progress happening here. So identify stakeholders, the project manager's task is ready for you to review. Awesome. And here you'll see that it identified the stakeholders and it actually took that information from our notes where it has Eric, Dave, and Hank. And we have this inside a loop component. And that is where I really like this connection between loop and planner. If I now navigate to the plan, which I can do by clicking on this button here, I'll actually get a specific page dedicated to the identifying stakeholders and I can start working with my team to change and alter and address additional values. And I can use the co-pilot to actually help me out further. So the real power of loop and planner with the project manager agent is that we have the ability to add these loop pages to the plan and only only add the loop component to the tasks that are very text heavy, where you can have these interactions with those specific tasks. Now you'll also see that there's a link to the plan, which is also cool, right? Because you'll need teams. And you're back to your agent plan. If I open up the whiteboard for the first time, and I'll suggest something about uh, stakeholder management best practices. I can insert them and I can create these as tasks and I can navigate back to the grid and all the way down we have our identify the key stakeholders and these six tasks. And once you have these values, you of course want to have them underneath your identifying stakeholders to add more value to it. I could have also uh, looked at Copilot and say, give me five suitable subtasks for the identify stakeholders task. And it would add those underneath the stakeholders tab, right? So that works great. Uh, and a very powerful use case for the copilot within planner. But what I wanted to show you was that now that I've clicked on the whiteboard and I navigate back to my loop, I should see 
my whiteboard here. At least I have seen that previously. And where did it go? Let's find another agent. So it would look like this, where it has the planner and the whiteboard showing up. Now let's see if the agent plan now has that as well. No, nope, for whatever reason it doesn't. So bottom line, it is a work in progress, I would say. And I do think that we need to find out a way to work with project manager agent plans differently than with normal standard plans. Reason behind it is probably because it has a different backend. Uh, I actually don't know what the reason is for not being able to push it to a premium plan, but I think this is a good way of working with Loop within a premium plan. Let me know what you think in the comments and I hope uh, to see you back soon.